Hi everyone, this is Jean-Karash Kedo with NeoWin and today we are taking a look at Windows 10 build 2061. So this was this is the build that was released earlier this week to insiders in the dev channel. And if you're wondering what, what that is, the dev channel is the new name for the fast ring. A couple of weeks ago, Microsoft announced that we were changing from rings to channels in the insider program. So now the dev the fast ring became the dev channel, the slow ring became the beta channel. And the release preview ring is still release preview, but now it's just channel instead of ring. And that's more in line with what we're seeing on the Microsoft Edge Insider program. So better, worse, I don't really know, but it's a change. And it's supposed to reflect the way the Insider program has already been working for a while. It's not meant to indicate future changes, but more so reflect the way the program has changed since its inception. Moving on from that, let's focus on the new build, because this is the first one in a long, long time that has any new features or, well, noteworthy new features, I should say. However, there have been a few smaller additions here and there from previous builds that I'm, I'll try to get into as well. But first, let's get into the big stuff that was added in this build. And that starts with the new start menu. You'll see here right away the tiles now, most of the tiles at least, are now sort of transparent. They follow your system theme, dark or light, or in the case of what I have here, it's actually using my accent color for the entire start menu, but even then the tiles themselves aren't that solid color that pops out so much, they're just transparent too, and you can kind of still see your background through the tiles. It looks a lot more elegant and just a lot better in general. I really, really prefer the way it looks now. And also you'll see on the side here on the app list that the icons themselves for those apps now don't have that square around them. They're just there. And it really helps bring out those new icons that Microsoft has been working on, like these alarms and clock, calculator, calendar, stuff like that, that have these new colorful icons. Now they stand out a lot more without having those little squares around them. Of course, if you have apps that haven't been updated to those new icons, now they look a little weirder, but that's something that will improve over time as more apps use those new icons. And speaking of new icons, folders in the start menu have this cool new icon too, uh, which falls way more in line with the rest of Microsoft's uh, Office apps and stuff like that. Just looks a lot more like what it should look like now. So that's a big improvement. Uh, but yeah, so you see the tiles there, I can just show you real, really quickly. Uh, if I disable a color on the start menu, everything will go black. And it's still transparent, you can still see through the tiles. Let me minimize that. And you can see the background a little bit. So it's like that, and it also applies to the light theme, so it, it's just way more elegant now. And you don't have those solid colors popping out at you so much. So that's definitely an improvement, at least in my view. Another big change here is the new, well, sort of new tablet posture behavior now. Uh, with the May 2020 update, Microsoft added a new tablet posture to Windows 10. So what it means that is when you detach a keyboard from your laptop, if you have a touch screen and the, the keyboard comes off, or if you, or if you can rotate it like my laptop here, you'll see that there's a new UI uh, where it uh, has more space between the items on the taskbar so you can um, hit the targets more easily or there's also a keyboard button here if you need to use the touch keyboard so this itself is not what's new but now Microsoft the Windows 10 doesn't send you a notification asking you do you want to switch to tablet mode it just switches you to this new tablet experience which is not the same thing as tablet mode because tablet mode, as you might remember, if you turn, I can still turn it on, it's still here. It just doesn't surface uh, as a notification. You can still turn it on and you'll see that it does what it's supposed to do. And now you have this full screen starts, uh, start screen and the transparent tiles also look great in this, by the way. But this new tablet experience doesn't do that. It just gives you more space to tap on things. It makes the touch keyboard more accessible. And now it just transitions to this automatically. 
and just doesn't even mention that uh, the new the own download mode, even though you can still enable it yourself. I do think Microsoft's probably trying to phase that out and just make it that one experience that uh, transitions seamlessly between tablets and um, mouse and keyboard. And so they're trying to remove tablet mode as it used to be and just make it a more seamless experience to go from one thing to the other. Now, let's take a look at some other things that are not as major, but still worthwhile. So notifications have changed a little bit. If I turn on focus assist here for a second, I'll try the notifications visualizer and I'll pop up this notification and you'll see a couple of changes right away. So for one thing, there's a new icon there that tells you what app the notification is coming from. And the text is also slightly uh, adjusted now where the text is inside the, the notification. It's a little more... Um, I actually can't point out the change specifically, but it looks a little different. And also you'll see that there's a new X button here, which does the same as before. There used to be an arrow, but now it's the, the X button. It just sends the notification into the notification center so it doesn't bother you. And it does that. I think it's just a, a matter of being recognizable. The arrow, you might not know exactly what it does or you don't really see it all that often. So now the X, you see that, you see the X and you know right away. You can click that, click that and it don't go, the notification will not go away. So it's just more recognizable and easier to understand. Uh, another change here, uh, it's in the taskbar, but you won't really see it if you're just upgrading from a previous build or something like that. But Microsoft is testing something where when you install Windows for the first time, if you sign in with a Microsoft account and you have a gaming PC or if you use Xbox often, uh, instead of having the usual layout where you have like your browser and the mail app and stuff down here, instead of that, they'll just replace the mail app with the Xbox app, for example, if it's a gaming PC. Or if you have an Android phone linked to your account, it'll pin the your phone app to the taskbar by default. But again, this is only for new installations. Microsoft says they won't mess with uh, your taskbar if you've already configured it before. So uh, that won't be a problem there. Just a, a small little change of testing to make the computer more ready for what you're more likely to do with it. Uh, another change, but this one I actually can't show you, is that now when you have a browser open, and multiple tabs, and then you also have multiple apps open at the same time. Usually what happens is what you see here is that the, the, the whole browser is just one item, and then the, the other apps are one item each. But now, if you have, if you're chosen to test this feature, which I, which I wasn't, uh, each of the tabs is going to appear as a separate item in the Alt tab menu. So now you can switch between apps, but also to the specific tab in your browser that you want to see. So that's a new feature that I can't show you, but it's also optional. So if you want to, you can disable that or you can make it so that you only have like three or five tabs show up. So you don't have all of your tabs show up in the task switcher. Uh, it's, it's pretty flexible, but not available to everyone. So I can show you that. So now let's dive a little bit into changes that were made in previous builds. So in the task manager, a pretty small change they made recently is if you go here into details, there's now a new architecture tab. This is mostly for ARM PCs like the Surface Pro X and stuff. So you can see if an app is being emulated or if it's running natively. You can see if it's x64, x86 in this case, but it's more useful for ARM PCs where the emulation is more noticeable in terms of performance and so you can know exactly what's dragging you down uh, in performance. So you can see that. And then there's a couple of new icons here if you scroll down the yeah, apps list. Windows Security has a new icon that falls in line with the rest of the Microsoft icons for all their apps and stuff. And also there's a new icon for when your location is being used. This was introduced also a few builds ago, but now if I open the Maps app here, you can see if I go to the taskbar, there's a new location icon there. 
that tells me the, the location is being used. It used to be just like a circle with another circle inside. Now it's that with an arrow there. It's just a trivial change. I think it was easy enough to understand, but now it's easier maybe. Now moving on to the settings app, there's a couple of changes here. Some more in this build, some more from previous builds. But if you go here, um, one of the changes would be here. I actually can't show it because again, I wasn't chosen for this. But if you look here at your like your specifications and things now, if you were chosen, you'll see a copy button down here and also under your Windows specifications. So you can just copy all of this information in one go much more easily and then you can share it with someone who might be helping you with, with some problem you have or something like that. So it will just make it easier to copy all of that information at once. Uh, but there's a lot more that's changed here. Uh, so if you go to, also in system I believe, display, if you go down here to graphic settings, now it'll, it'll automatically populate your apps list, it's just a small change, but before, if you wanted to have custom settings for each app, you would have to add every app add individually, you would have to choose anything you wanted to add, you would have to do it yourself. So now Windows just populates this list with a few apps that it thinks uh, you might that might be important to set and it just sets them automatically you can change it of course but now um, they're there automatically and you don't have to necessarily have to add them yourself uh, there are also some changes to the way diagnostic data is handled I'm not sure exactly where that is uh, oh there you go so you can see uh, it used to be that Microsoft would refer, when you set up a PC, especially, you notice um, they ask you if you want to use basic diagnostic data or full diagnostic data. They just changed those names to be required diagnostic data and optional data. So it's a little easier to know what you should select. So now you know that the full set is optional and you don't feel so tempted to share all of it. Uh, another change is in the app defaults. Again, a small one, but if you go to default apps and you want to set the default apps by file type, now when the file extensions list shows up, you can also search for a specific file extension. Instead of having to scroll down to find what you're looking for, you can actually search for it. If I try to search for like MP4, whoops, that's not what I'm going to do. It's not very fast, but it, 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 oh wow, okay. So it's a long list, so it's not a very fast experience. My laptop might not be the fastest either. Um, but yes, it, it, it's there, kind of. But yeah, you can search for an extension now if you want to find the apps that work with that. And there's also one final thing in the settings app is that you can now view optional updates and all of driver updates that you might have for your PC, they all show up here and you can install them if you want to. These will never be downloaded automatically. If they're optional, they won't download by themselves. But if you want to, you can go in there and download them yourself. So that's a bunch of changes to the settings app. Finally, there's just a, a couple more things that I really can't show because they're very specific. But if you use eye control, there's a new experience for eye control where things are a little more space and it's easier to use. Uh, if you use Windows Subsystem for Linux, now it integrates with uh, your File Explorer so you can access things from there. Like It will show up as a, as a section here on the side. So that's a, another integration that you have there. And also there's new features for Windows Subsystem for Linux that were, that were added recently, like GPU compute. So now you can actually use the power of your GPU in, if you're using Linux. Or, and there are new commands like install and update for WSL. So it's just um, small improvements. If you use WSL, they might be quite useful for you. I can't really demonstrate them though. And that's really it so far. That's all that's been added uh, up until now. Just one thing to note before we close up is that um, these builds in the dev channel now, they're not necessarily preparing a specific 
future update. So it used to be that the faster you would test the next feature update from Windows 10, and then you know those features would just be brought to the small ring and then to the public releases. But now the dev channel is constantly testing new things. And if there's no guarantee that they will make it to the next version of Windows 10, they're just being tested. And then if Microsoft feels that they're ready to implement them in an actual release of Windows 10, then they'll bring those features down to builds in the beta channel. So you'll never, you're never guaranteed to get features from the data channel in public releases of Windows 10. And really that already kind of happened before. I don't know if you remember this, but during the Redstone, five development cycle, I believe that was it. And even before that, Microsoft was testing this feature called sets where all of your apps would open in separate tabs instead of being necessarily separate windows, you could group them in tabs. And that was in testing in two separate development cycles. And then Microsoft just gave up on it because they never felt, they never felt like it was good enough to implement. But people expected it to be implemented because it was being tested. Now, there's never a guarantee that those things will be implemented, and hopefully that helps moderate expectations from people. And until these features make it to the beta channel, there's no guarantee that they will be in the next feature update to Windows 10. So, uh, that's just a brief explanation of how the Insider program works now. That's all for today. I hope you liked this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.